In this exercise, we're gonna work on uh, our collars. So this is a basic collar. You might see this type or shape of collar in what's called a convertible collar. Um, it looks similar to a jacket or a sport coat lapel. So um, understand that these are half patterns. So if you want to make an entire collar shape, uh, that's up to you. Cut another uh, pattern and tape it together. Also notice that I have the grain lines going in, going in this direction, um, the length of the collar instead of the height or the width. So your collars really should be cut on the straight grain. However, depending on the style or the design, you may have different um, variations of where the grain lines are. Sometimes the under collar is cut on the bias and that's so that the collar will roll really nicely over. Um, over the stand. In any case, this doesn't. This has a self stand in it, and when we get into the uh, level three, and maybe there might be a level four, um, I'll discuss more about the various types of collars. So for right now, we're going to work on this basic collar, and I have two pattern pieces. I have the top collar, and I have the under collar. The under collar is slightly smaller than the top collar in height. And that's so when it's sewn together, and uh, as you can see, I put the pieces together here at the top of the collar. Once it's sewn together and everything has been stretched in place and we pull this back down to meet at the seam down here, the under collar rolls the top collar slightly underneath so that we don't have an ugly seam line on the top. So it's called turn a cloth um, and it will actually turn that fabric to the underside. So there are some notches to um, understand. So these notches here would identify the shoulder seam and that's how um, you would know that you are hitting everything um, appropriately when you sew it into the collar. These notches here are for the seam allowance and we're gonna be using a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna get those notched out. All right, so the other thing that we need to talk about is this top collar. So the top collar is going to be interfaced with some fusible. And again, uh, as all my other uh, fusibles, I like to use the Pellon EK130 Easy Knit Interfacing. And just the top collar on this one is going to be fused and that will give a very nice looking um, flat, sturdy looking collar. So we're not going to fuse the, the under collar, just the top collar. So I'm going to get these all prepared. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. Okay, so now that these have been cut out, um, I need to identify the face side. And remember when we did the pocket flaps, we also had an under pocket flap and a top pocket flap. If you can't remember which is your top, simply just put your pattern piece right on top of them. And if they match, that is the size. Remember that the under collar is smaller than the top collar. So if I put this one here, there's quite a bit of here, so quite a bit of fabric left here. So this must be the top collar. Now, before I mark this, I wasn't paying attention when I cut out my fusible. I didn't check for which side um, that I had uh, laying up on the fusible 
for the texture, which is the glue side. And the glue side needs to go on the wrong side of the top collar. So if I mark this as the, the top with the markings and I fuse it and I put this under here, then when I go to sew my under collar, it's not gonna sew in because this I'm marking as the face side. So to save myself a little bit of trouble, I'm just going to double check, right? Because I want to be able to flip this over, right? And sew it, sew it together. So if I'm gonna call this the face side of my top collar, I'll go ahead and do that. I will mark it here in front of you. I'm gonna mark this as my face side. Here is the textured side, which if I flip this over, it will glue onto this side. Once that's glued on, then we have a face side, but we need to sew these face side to face side. The face side of the under collar is obvious, we, we put it up here, um, but to save space, because we don't have a full pattern piece, I didn't wanna flip this the other way to have you cut it out because it's not a full uh, collar and it wouldn't be flipped in the industry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fake this out a little bit. So I'm gonna move the paper over a little bit and the face side is actually the underneath side because it's face sides together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this over so now it's like a mirror image of this and then I'll do my under collar markings. And I'm putting little crosses on for my under collar, just like under collar, just like we did for the flap. So now when I go to sew this, I can put face sides together. Now understand that in the industry you would have a full collar and they would be mirror images of each other anyway, so that you wouldn't have to worry about which um, way to sew it in. Because even if I flipped it like this, this side would still match if there was a full collar. So I know that was a bit confusing, but if you just follow my instructions, for actually um, flipping over your under collar to mirror your top collar and then mark that your top side, you're gonna be okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go fuse the interfacing onto my top collar and then we'll go straight over to the machine from there. Okay, we're ready to work um, and putting our collar together, our straight collar. Now, this of course is half a collar, um, if you remember, and I've fused the top collar, so that's all done. So all I need to do is match these face sides to together, matching the knots. N now the crosses are my under collar and the wavy lines are my top collar. So I'm going to match the top collar to the under collar, match up that notch, all of my other notches, right? and I'm going to pin that together. And I wanna show you something really, really quickly. And make sure you're matching your seam allowance notches here on this edge, okay? Now, we're not ready to sew. We're actually not gonna sew on this end, but I wanted you to show you the matching the notches. Now let's turn this over. Now, if you look at this closely, my top collar is taller than my under collar. There's a reason for that. That's because we want the top collar to roll to the under collar so that we don't see a seam on the top. So I matched my seams here, but that's not where we actually want to sew. What we want to do, and I'm gonna unpin this, is we actually want to match this top edge here. Now, if you had a whole collar, it would be a little bit different, but since this is just an exercise, we're actually going to be stretching this in, match this edge and then this corner, and they will probably match, the curves will match. And I'm gonna pin these together. And this exercise is just to show you what the finished product is going to look like. Because after this, when we match these edges up to those notches, 
the front will actually roll over. But this exercise is really to talk to you about understitching. And once we sew this collar together, we're actually going to actually do understitching. And all that's going to be done at the machine. Um, we're not going to come back here until we're ready to press it. And then we'll pin it here at the bottom. Okay, so this is now all ready to sew. This is the top part of the collar. So we're going to stitch across from here all the way across. Then we're going to stop and then we're going to do under stitching and then we'll finish the collar side by sewing it closed here at a quarter inch. We're going to keep this bottom part open. All right. It is confusing at this point, but understand you'll understand it once we get the finished uh, product done. You'll understand why we did um, this exercise. Okay, so we're ready to sew our collar together. And again, remember, it's a little bit, uh, the under collar is shorter than the top collar. But we're going to actually sew the top edge of the collar first, and we're going to sew it all the way across. So that's all we need to do for right now. So it's a quarter inch seam, regular stitch length, 12 to 14 inches. And I'm going to start with a back stitch. And again, remember, this is half a collar. So I'm going to follow this curve all the way up to that point. And then I'm going to sew all the way off. I'm going to backstitch here. Okay, keep our threads trim. And now what we want to do is we want to understitch, but we want to understitch to the under collar, the side that doesn't have the interfacing. The top collar is the piece that has the interfacing. So I'm going to fold the under collar over um, the seam allowance, and now we're going to understitch on top of that, a sixteenth away from that uh, seam. Backstitch. And then walk up. Now there's a slight curve as we get to the point. So you're going to have to pull this away, smooth it away as you get up there. So I'm back stitching. And then we're going to back stitch here. Okay, so now we have the seam allowance understitched to the under collar. And now what we want to do is right here at that seam, we're going to fold that over at that seam and we're going to match these edges up. Make sure that here. You see how at this edge is we see two layer two rows of stitching. That's what we want to see. So I'm actually going to put a pin there, hold that down in place, and then make sure that all of our edges here on the side, this is the side of the collar, I'm going to put a pin there right on that seam allowance. Now we can stitch from the top and we'll want to back stitch right here at that angle. I know we have it a little extra here, but we'll trim that off in just a second once we get back over to the pressing mat. So I have that there. I'm going to pull this pin out now that I know that that's fold is and make sure it's a good fold. And it's an angle. It's at an angle. It's a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to start off by back stitching. And I'm going to go over just over that edge here. And then I'm going to continue to sew down. And make sure your edges here match. And it's a quarter inch seam allowance, and we're coming back to that notch, back stitch, and now I can take this out. Now, there are a couple of things that we'll need to do. We'll have to go over the pressing mat. We're going to turn this face side out, um, but there's some clipping up here we're going to do. But just to show you that I do have the understitching here on the under collar, and then the seam is taking place here. We will need to turn this, um, get this point done. There are a couple of different ways that we can do that, but I'll discuss that once we get over to the pressing mat. 
Okay, so we're ready to finish up the collar and there's just a little clipping that needs to be done up here in this corner. So uh, it kind of hangs over on af past the uh, seam allowance and that's fine. Um, we want to clip it diagonally here, but we don't want to go past this part and we don't want to get too super close to the stitching here, right, right here. So when we clip this, we want to clip it uh, gr gradually and we may just need to actually trim a little extra past this so it goes gradually into a point up here. We don't want to just clip it at an angle like this because when we turn it to the face side we would still have bulk right here. So we want it to be a gradual clipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two clips. I'm going to do an angled here but not not, this is hard to explain, not past this stitching here. So let me hold this up here. You see how close that is, right? So I'm going to just clip that off and then now I'm going to trim an angle. I'm just going to shave just a little bit more off, okay? So now we want to turn this to the face side and you'll need something pointy. And I know there are point turners out there. There's also a method where you take a needle and thread and knot the end of the thread and take the needle through this corner point and turn it through. So that's a tailoring method. This is production sewing, so we wanna do it as quickly as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reach under here and put my finger up. I've got my middle finger up there. That's the finger I pr prefer to have here. And then I'm gonna take my snips, and I'm gonna be really careful not to poke through, but I'm gonna take this side, I'm just gonna kinda grab this corner, and I'm gonna push it toward my finger till I feel it on my finger. And then I will turn everything right side out. And then here on this point, I will just be very careful using the tips of my snips to continue to push make sure you don't push too hard otherwise it will open up to that side right that looks like a not a bad point so i'm going to finish turning it to the face side okay and if you still want more of a point sometimes you can take your fingers wiggle it a little bit and then take your fingernails and just kind of pull it snap at it a little bit and it will point a little bit more. Okay, so now we want the, we want to make sure also that this edge is nice and flush. I'm going to finger press that down. And then one thing is, is the reason we did this under stitching is so that the top collar, and I'll flip this around so you can see it from top down, the top collar we want to roll to the underside. And how that happens is we make sure that we get these edges down here while matching the notches. Everything is together. And I'll take a couple pins and pin that. Now you can stitch these together with a basting stitch if you want, but this is the edge that actually gets sewn into the collar area, the neckline of the top. Okay, and now once all that is aligned and we push this, we see that the top collar actually rolls over to the under collar. And I'm gonna give that one press, make sure our edges are nice and flush here on this side. Grab my iron and I'm gonna give this a press. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the collar. I would flip this over and I would actually write on here what this exercise was, collar point, today's date, and your name. And then this can of course go right into the notebook.